UFC welterweight contender Sean Brady is eyeing big opportunities after his impressive victory over Gilbert Burns this past weekend. With his latest win, Brady is likely to move closer to the top five in the division, setting the stage for some high-profile matchups. Sean Brady showcased his resilience and skills by securing a unanimous decision victory over Gilbert Burns in the main event of UFC Fight Night on September 7. This win marked Brady's second consecutive victory since suffering his first career defeat against Bilal Muhammad in 2022 and being sidelined for 14 months due to injury. After returning, he managed to defeat Kelvin and now Burns, solidifying his status as a top contender in the UFC welterweight division. By defeating Burns, who was ranked number 6, Brady has positioned himself just outside the top 5 in the welterweight rankings. As he awaits the next rankings update, the 31-year-old Philadelphia native has made it clear that he has his sights set on some of the division's biggest names, particularly Colby Covington. At the post-fight press conference, Brady expressed a strong desire to face former title challenger Colby Covington. Not mincing words, Brady criticized Covington and suggested that a fight against him would be an easy matchup, I'll fight Colby. I think Colby is the easiest matchup in the division. I'll piece him up on the feet. I'll ragdoll him, Brady said. I'll fight Colby in a heartbeat. UFC, please give me Colby, I will end him. He shouldn't even be ranked. When's the last time he fought? Covington, who last competed in March 2022 when he defeated Jorge, has been relatively inactive. His ranking and status in the division have been points of contention for some fighters, including Brady. In addition to Covington, Brady also mentioned Ian Gary as a potential opponent. Gary, an undefeated rising star in the welterweight division, presents another intriguing challenge for Brady. Both fighters have shown interest in facing each other, which could set the stage for a high-stakes bout that could propel the winner closer to a title shot. Sean Brady's dominant win over Burns has put him back on track in the welterweight division, and he's now poised for a breakthrough moment. Whether the UFC decides to book a fight against Covington, Gary, or another top contender, Brady has made it clear that he is ready to take on anyone standing between him and a shot at the title. His strong call-out of Covington and the potential showdown with Gary indicate that Brady is prepared to fight his way to the top, and his recent performances suggest he has the skills and determination to do just that. Fans will be eagerly watching to see what the UFC decides for Brady's next challenge. Silva, now riding a six-fight win streak in the UFC, is looking toward a potential title shot in the flyweight division, but she also has an interest in facing top-ranked contenders like Macy Barber to bolster her claim for gold. After her win, Silva spoke with Michael Bisping and delivered an emotional message dedicated to her late sister, who passed away last year. Silva's heartfelt words addressed fans directly, offering a plea to those struggling with addiction. I lost my sister recently, four months ago and I wanted to send a message to any of you fans out there please, if you let yourself fall into the world of drugs, please understand that you are loved, you are worth it. This moment highlighted the personal challenges Silva has faced outside the octagon, adding a poignant layer to her victory over Andrade. Now positioned closer than ever to a shot at the flyweight belt, Silva has made it clear that she is ready for any opportunity that might come her way. She expressed her eagerness to compete for the title if the UFC calls. If the UFC comes to me and says, hey, are you ready to fight for the belt by the end of the year? I will be ready, Silva said during the post-fight press conference. I trained to be a champion, I came here to be a champion and if that's what the UFC does, if you give me the opportunity to get that belt, just send that belt over. While her ultimate goal is the championship, Silva is also keeping a close eye on other top contenders in the division, particularly Macy Barber, who is currently ranked number four. Barber is seen as a formidable opponent who could help Silva solidify her place as a top contender. Silva's interest in Barber's ranking suggests she is strategic about her path to the top. 
securing a win over a highly ranked opponent like Barber would undeniably strengthen her case for a title shot. As the flyweight division heats up, the title will be contested next weekend in the co-main event of UFC 306, where champion Alexa Grasso is set to defend her belt against Valentina Shevchenko in their trilogy fight. Silva expressed her hopes that Grasso retains the title. My wish is that Alexa wins because I don't know her personally, but I follow her and she seems like such a nice person. She's got this aura and I think this is her shot because Valentina is amazing, but she's had her moment. This is the time for Alexa, until I arrive, and I get there. Silva sees Grasso as a deserving champion and believes it is her time to shine, until Silva herself steps up for a title challenge. Natalia Silva's rise in the UFC flyweight division has been nothing short of impressive, and her victory over Andrade has propelled her into serious title contention. Whether she gets her shot at the belt by the end of the year or faces another top contender like Macy Barber first, Silva is determined to prove she belongs among the elite and is prepared to seize the opportunity when it comes. With her combination of skill, determination, and a compelling backstory, Silva is quickly becoming a fan favorite in the UFC. UFC 306, also known as UFC Noche, is set to make history as the first UFC event to be held at the newly built Sphere in Las Vegas on September 14. With its groundbreaking technology and massive LED screen, the venue promises an unprecedented viewing experience for fans. However, the sheer complexity of the production has raised both excitement and concerns, even among UFC president Dana White. The Sphere is equipped with a jaw-dropping 160,000-square-foot LED screen that wraps around the interior, capable of displaying intricate environments and visuals throughout the event. One unique aspect of UFC 306 is that a feature film will play out in chapters on this giant screen, interspersed with the fights. According to UFC executive Craig Borsari, these worlds created by the screen are designed to enhance the viewing experience, but they will also be displayed during the fights themselves. This ambitious use of technology has led to concerns from fighters, such as UFC featherweight Brian Ortega, who has admitted that he might be, for sure, distracted by the lighting and dynamic environments on the screen during his fight against Diego Lopez. Dana White acknowledged the uncertainty, stating, We don't know if it'll distract fighters, we don't know until late Saturday night. Dana White elaborated on the massive effort that has gone into planning this event, describing it as unlike anything the UFC has attempted before. The production involves a level of complexity that required months of preparation. White noted that the lighting setup alone took four months to figure out. Additionally, a render farm was built inside the sphere to handle the graphics, which take 12 days to render for any changes, compared to the mere hours needed for a typical UFC event. We're basically doing movies, there will be a movie that night and between chapters of the movie, there will be fights. The scale of the production also necessitated assembling a much larger team and doubling the usual number of production trucks. White pointed out that if he revealed even a quarter of what was involved in planning the show, most people wouldn't grasp the level of difficulty. How complex this thing is, if I even laid a quarter of it out, people wouldn't even understand how hard and how challenging this thing really was. White emphasized that UFC 306 at the Sphere represents a fusion of sports and entertainment, pushing the boundaries of what a live sports event can be. While the UFC is accustomed to delivering spectacular events, this is uncharted territory, and there is still an air of uncertainty about whether the concept will work as intended. Dana White, the UFC president, had a positive and respectful reaction to the news of Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson's retirement. White commended Johnson for his remarkable career and confirmed that he will absolutely be inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. When asked about Johnson's retirement, White expressed admiration for the former UFC flyweight champion's achievements and longevity in the sport. 
Who's defended Demetrius Johnson more than me? Good for him. Incredible career he had. I've never had a problem with Demetrius Johnson. These comments highlight White's recognition of Johnson's dominance during his UFC tenure and his contributions to the sport of MMA. Demetrius Johnson is widely regarded as one of the greatest mixed martial artists of all time. During his time in the UFC, Johnson set the record for the most consecutive title defenses, 11, in UFC history, a testament to his skill, consistency, and adaptability. His reign as the UFC flyweight champion lasted from 2012 to 2018, and his innovative techniques, like the mighty whiz bar, submission against Ray Borg, cemented his legacy as a true pioneer of the sport. After leaving the UFC in a historic trade deal that saw him move to one championship, Johnson continued to compete at the highest level, capturing the one flyweight Grand Prix title and securing several notable wins. Given his accomplishments, Dana White's statement about Johnson's future induction into the UFC Hall of Fame seems more than fitting. Johnson's technical prowess, sportsmanship, and role as a flyweight pioneer have left an indelible mark on the sport. The acknowledgement from the UFC president signals an appreciation for Johnson's career and his status as one of the all-time greats in MMA. As fans and fighters alike reflect on Johnson's career, his impending induction into the UFC Hall of Fame will serve as a well-deserved honor for a fighter who has inspired many and helped elevate the sport of MMA to new heights. Matt Schnell's post-fight gesture after his bout against Cody Durden has sparked speculation about his future in mixed martial arts. After suffering his third consecutive stoppage defeat, Schnell left his gloves in the octagon, a traditional sign of retirement in the sport. Schnell was originally scheduled to fight Alessandro Costa, but with Costa withdrawing due to injury, Cody Durden stepped in on short notice. Schnell began the fight with promising signs, having won the first round on at least one scorecard and showcasing his striking skills. However, during the fight, he attempted a takedown, which led to him being caught in a rare ninja choke by Durden, resulting in a submission loss. Leaving gloves in the octagon is a symbolic gesture in MMA that typically indicates a fighter's intention to retire. While Schnell has not officially announced his retirement, this gesture, combined with his recent losses, suggests he may be contemplating stepping away from the sport. Schnell debuted in the UFC in 2016 following his stint on The Ultimate Fighter. Throughout his career, he has faced notable opponents like Steve Ursig, Brandon Royval, and current champion Alexander Pontoya. Despite some high points, Schnell has struggled recently, with his last three fights all ending in stoppage defeats. As of now, there has been no official confirmation from Schnell regarding his retirement. Fighters often take time to reflect on their careers before making a final decision. Fans and analysts will be watching closely to see if Schnell makes a formal announcement or if he chooses to continue fighting. Schnell's decision will likely be influenced by his recovery, reflection on his recent performances, and discussions with his team. Regardless of his choice, his career has been marked by significant contributions to the flyweight division. Brandon Moreno, the former UFC flyweight champion, is feeling rejuvenated and highly motivated as he prepares for his return to the octagon at UFC Edmonton. After a period of inactivity following his loss to Brandon Royville in February, Moreno will face Amir Albazi later this year, marking his comeback and a crucial step toward re-entering the title conversation. For a long time, Moreno was at the top of the UFC flyweight division, battling fiercely with Davison Figueiredo in one of the most memorable rivalries in the division's history. However, two consecutive losses, including the defeat to Royville, prompted Moreno to step away from the sport temporarily. His decision surprised many, especially considering the competitive nature of the flyweight division and his previous statements indicating a more extended break from MMA. Yet, his return comes less than a year after his last fight, reflecting a renewed sense of purpose. 
In a recent interview, Moreno discussed the positive impact that his time away from fighting has had on his mental and emotional state. Right now, I find myself in a really good moment, Moreno shared. The time I was away from MMA really helped me to clear my head and be with my family without thinking about fighting. During this hiatus, Moreno focused on spending quality time with his family, which allowed him to step back from the constant pressure of competition. Even though I was only doing one or two fights a year, I would fight, and immediately I would already be asked when my next fight would be and against who. When you have an opponent and date set, you could still be two, four months away, but you have that fighting chip inside you, and you're not 100% relaxed. I took this time to breathe and just spend time with my daughter and wife and just enjoy life. Despite enjoying his time away, Moreno acknowledged the internal struggle of balancing relaxation with the competitive drive inherent to professional athletes. As an athlete, you're also accustomed to train every day, the competition, so there is a point when you're like, man, I want to return, but you have to fight yourself so you can relax and wind down, he explained. I feel very motivated to fight at this moment. Brandon Moreno's return fight against Amir Albazi at UFC Edmonton is crucial for the former champion's career. A victory would not only break his losing streak but also potentially position him back in the mix for the flyweight title. For fans, Moreno's comeback represents the determination and resilience of a fighter who, despite facing setbacks, is ready to climb back to the top of his division. With his refreshed mindset and renewed focus, Moreno is poised to make a significant impact upon his return to the octagon, reminding everyone why he was once at the pinnacle of the UFC flyweight division.